Hi, right, we're live, Paula. <laughs> okay, everyone. Uh, we got a little bit bored of the scene. It's the same old faces, same old places, same old cases. We decided that we wanted to uh, have some conversations. I've met some people recently, uh, Philip Kinsella and uh, N.K. Crander, Earl Grey, you know, quite a lot of people that they've made me feel a little bit more enthusiastic about writing about my own stuff, about talking about my own stuff and actually bringing people out and talking to people who we don't see all the time. You know, I mean, I know probably some of you are sick of hearing about what happened to me, but this year um, the other two witnesses are coming forward. But until that time, we thought we'd do something different and we're just going to do these videos and have chats and talk about our experiences. Paula, I met in 2012, uh, where she was having experiences with the Greys and um, they just sort of turned up in my life as well. And I didn't really, even though obviously I knew what I'd read about the Greys, my experiences of them was zilch. So we met at a really fortuitous time, which makes us think that it wasn't altogether like accidental. Um, we've had some experiences together, <laughs> and uh, but Paula is a truly fascinating person, and their experiences just need to be heard. So um, I wanted to kick this off by talking to her. We've talked about this for a while um, about cataloging things, maybe writing them down. But videos are good; everyone likes to watch a video, so we thought we'd start with the video. So here we are. Now then, <laughs> you're right, Sasha. I'm all right, Paula, love. <laughs> oh, let's just see if we can maybe stay sensible for five minutes. Okay. Um, so, Quite impossible, but... <laughs> so, like I said, we met in 2012, didn't we? Yeah. And, and uh, it was Joanne Summers girls <laughs> who gave you my number. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you gave me a card. <laughs> and said, for that, at least. At least, oh. <laughs> thank her for that. At least, yeah, the one yeah. good thing that, it's, uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember you telling me that your daughter had been having some weird experiences and like little sidekick moments and yeah. kind of knowing your grandma's house because you've lived in the same street, haven't you, all your life? Yeah, sort of, part, uh, in a few houses. So your daughter was having little moments of kind of like psychic clarity and yeah. you were told, you told me that you were told that they were called time slips. I was like, what is that? Because <laughs> I said to you, uh, <laughs> JS has said that the time slips and I'm like, Sasha, what the hell are time slips? I'm not <laughs> I was like, the uh, moment. When I, I, no, I can't remember her. <laughs> I think she was just, well, I, I think she's psychic, basically, and intuitive. Or, you know, we have talked about this before, haven't we, about um, telepathy, psychic ability, about it being telepathy. And obviously, when we um, interact with the greys from a very young age, they don't talk, they use telepathy. So we probably communicate telepathically before we can speak, yeah. you know, yeah. Is of uh, deaf people they can sign before they can speak but uh, so I think that's why a lot of us have these abilities to be able to read each other read situations places between yeah. us all. Uh, mm. so I think that's pretty much what was actually going on but that's what brought us together anyway and uh, you came to visit me in my house and then blew my mind <laughs> 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 yeah yeah well you know when people kind of go talking about their experiences they're like they relive it you know they're not like um you know you're not telling a story you're painting a picture it's a difference and boy yeah. just you ever paint a picture I was just jar on the floor like this woman is so telling the truth the painstaking detail every little bit you wanted me there in the moment so yeah. you know, I've seen it you know I wish that thing could happen where one day it might happen where we can see each other you know when I'm talking about something it'll happen in the future where we can well I'm hoping so with technology because it's kind of going to the way where it can 
you know, map frame waves and recreate images, yeah. using images that are on the net, obviously, but that's in its infancy. And when that uh, technology develops, I would really like to have my brain plugged into it um, mm -hmm. and to find out, you know, what the nature of them are, because, you know, some of them uh, don't feel real. Some of them feel more like inserts, they feel like setups, they feel... Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, is it a dream? Is it, or is it something else? And you know, when we can map the brainwave of an abductee, we can tell, oh, well, that's false memory, or you dreamt that, or oh no, you were wide awake when that happened. <laughs> you know, whatever. With that, you know, I'm looking forward to that kind of thing, and I don't see why anybody would refuse to subject themselves to it if they genuinely want to know the nature of what happens to them, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So it's the cat that's, oh, my God. Cat, your cat. <laughs> well, yeah, this it's is real life, folks. Right. <laughs> We've both got cats. Wear that. Can, <laughs> you wear that. can you give me a moment? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Put them out. Seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> we said this would happen. <laughs> oh, cat, no, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Is it done Cushion, on it? Yeah. <laughs> It's such a okay. lovable paste. <laughs> There's a studling Dudley. So, uh, yeah, well, you know what? We, this is not a professional outfit, is it? We're not in a studio um, and blah, blah, blah. Um, we're just women who've had weird stuff happen to us and we're just sort of like trying to figure out the nature of our experiences and what our lives actually are because we've got half a life. We don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> we don't even know that other half, do we? So no. Like I always said it's like living in two lives. Yeah, and not knowing what one of them is. Yeah. So we have to get, you know, we have to be okay with a lot of stuff, like not ever having any answers. We have to be okay with cat. It doesn't matter if we lock our door, you know. Yeah. There's, there's no safety anymore there's no bubble you know we, we have to be up well we'll just try and be okay with it all we have to <laughs> so, no choice, really. <laughs> right your first experience what do you remember um uh, from right from the first one was sitting on the outside toilet mid in top uh, your mid in is actually a, your stone that sits on the out on top of the outside toilet, and um, talking to a bird. <laughs> Probably those that are going to laugh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but yeah, in the way, I am not verbally speaking. It's telepathy, so it's normal to me at that point. But then. As I grew, as days went on, I'm actually doing half telepathy, half verbal. I could do both. Yeah. So um, I just remember the very first bit was I'm sat on the, the midden on the outside toilet top wall and a bird, black bird, being sat next. To, well, it wasn't a black bird as is such a, it was a black bird the color black but i'm totally unsure what bird it was you know anyway um it just used to sit right next to me and it, it ask me questions and i just thought this were normal so it was like everyday questions like how's your family do you like your family do you like school blah 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 and to me, it wasn't unusual because at four year old, I didn't know any different. So I didn't know that how I was speaking through it in my mind um, was not normal to everybody else, you know. So 
Um, this, it, it, and then it, it, I'll f- it, say, right, I'll come back, whatever, go off over the roof. Sit and watch me for a bit on the slates, on roof opposite. And then I'd carry on doing my own thing, playing. You know, you get a little bit of stone and you're scratching it on stone, you know, writing your name and stuff like that. And then uh, my mum would shout me in, you know, for me dinner or whatever. So, um, because this is when I used to go to nurseries in the mornings, so I'd be free all afternoon. And uh, then it had happened again the day after that. I'd sit on the mid the, the the bird would be sat there with waiting for me to go up to it, or yeah. it come down. You know, it'll sit and watch me because I, I knew it was there for some reason. It's like at four year old, you you tend to forget what happened yesterday. You know what I mean? It was like, but somehow I used to know to look up there, and then it'd come down, and it it had ask the same questions, but in a different sort of way. So it'd be like, did you enjoy school today? Do you like your mummy and daddy? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And not what I was doing sat there, why I was sat there playing. You know what I mean? If if I were going to ask a question to someone, I'd say, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Why are you sat yeah. on, on the meeting top? Well, you know, but no, it was none of that, what I was doing there and then. It was like all based on family and what I was doing at, you know, school. Like school, yeah. And it were every day. Sometimes it didn't even talk. It were every day through the summer in, in the, when it were raining and that I didn't play out. But I'd still see the bird outside the window looking. And anyway, one particular time, this has gone on all the way through six or six week holidays my mum said that I must have had a good summer because I remember it there being there all the time you know so and um this particular time the bird come down old I can't remember whether I'd sat there first or bird had sat there first I can't remember and my neighbour up the street this is I remember this one in particular my neighbour the night before had given me she used to go to uh rock and roll um like uh it won't want to dance it were you know like the end of competitions and that for dancing oh, yeah all oh, right yeah well, one of them and it, it were like flared out and in waste and i mean obviously it was like 12 times size it's too big and these little shoes that were massive you know I'd scrape along as i'm walking and um <laughs> So I'd put that on, and it it it'd either come down or it was there before me. But then I'd I was sat there and it said the same question again, but in a different. I don't know how many times you can ask the same questions in, you know, six week week worth of different ways. I don't know, but I always understood what it said. And by this point, I was verbally talking and telepathically talking so I could do both bilingual <laughs> so anyway um, my mum then at, at some point I must have been looking at a kitchen window and she said oh, oh you're talking to and this bird gone it would just gone straight up on the roof and then it'd be like it'd come back down again and my mum knew by then because I'd said I'd been talking at Inca now, if you put that bit in, <laughs> we yeah. could take it from there. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a few, well, I don't know how long ago, maybe four years ago, we were all together and your mum just came out with it. You did, We weren't talking about it. She said, do you remember when you used to sit and talk, at, talk to that bird? And you went, yeah. And she said, you called it Inca and you couldn't, you'd forgotten that bit. I couldn't, I didn't, well, I don't even, I don't even remember it, never mind, forgot it. Yeah. So what, at four year old, yeah. Yeah, she said that you called it Inca. So mm. when I went and looked, I was Googling all that kind of stuff, trying to figure out why, why would you call it Inca? I was Googling all kinds of things. 
And it turns out that Inca is actually the name of a type of blackbird. So mm. that that was really interesting because how would you even know that at far? Old. Yeah. You know, yeah, I remember, I remember, you know, the things that it said to me in all them different ways. Um, but I don't really ever remember calling it Inca. Now, it, to me, that is really unusual not to remember a name. But yet I remember all the other little bits that come with it, all the other bit of details. And, you know, my mum said, and, you know, I'd go in house and my mum would say, have you been talking to uh, that Inca again? You know, that's what she said, I'd said. Yeah. And um, Inca again. And so uh, she heard me talking. So it sounds like I'm talking verbally to the... Blackbird who's talking um, telepathically. So I'm answering something to her that is silent. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then one day, um, it just sat there. It didn't say a word. And I didn't say a word. And we were just sat I had, a, I had one of them little stones in me. And I was just kind of scratching, you know, mid in top of the toilet. And uh, we were just sat there looking at each other, going like that. And it had looked down, well, it said, look up, up at me, look down, look up at me. And it was just silent. I don't know how long it sat there. Um, and it was just silent. And then it said, uh, I've got to go. I'll be back at some point. You know what I mean? It was Not yeah. the exact words. I can't remember the exact words. But I was absolutely distraught. Oh no! I'll come. I'll see you. I'll be seeing you later or something. It was something to that effect, anyway. And I never saw it again after that. But it was then at, at, at twelve upwards that I, that's when I started seeing the greys. Yeah. So I think it's that it, it, it was either one of them, <laughs> or um, it was connected to that. It's coming through that. I have no idea. Mm. It's bizarre though, because your mum just we weren't talking about it and hadn't even been talking about anything weird. She just I came out know. with it, didn't she? One day, and we were all like, what? Always to you, I won't bother talking about it in front of my mum, she don't believe it. Yeah, even yeah. though I stood there and witnessed me talking to a bird, but that bird would not let if anybody come towards me, it'd be gone, you know. Yeah. So totally unapproachable to other people but it was like it's totally something else to me you know I mean like it's not always about aliens is it it's not all, like, always about paranormal mm. events things moving doors slamming hearing voices I mean you, you can't get much weirder than talking to a bird and of course it sounds bonkers but yes. all, of, all of it's bonkers how can you know <laughs> so, um, was Candy and the Pig the next? Candy and the Pig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot that that six year old. Yeah. And it's you know what? I just totally forgot about that bit because as I'm getting older, I'm thinking, oh God, yes. Yeah, so you've got to pull it out for me to remember now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was twelve, but in six year old. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Uh, you call you, you you had a name for it, you know, can the candy and the pig experience. So you have to explain that to people then. <laughs> so this is another weird one, but it's uh, terrifying for me and for the dog. Um so I had a golden retriever and uh my mum used to <coughs> excuse me. So um, my mum used to do washing every night. I think she did up until she, she did. She got poorly last year. But she'd sit in the kitchen with the washing machine on, just watching the washer go round and round and round and round. <laughs> right? Anyway, so what, what do you do at six-year-old? There's no to do, you know what I mean? So um, my sister, I don't know where she was. She might have been playing upstairs or out with a friend. But I can't see it being that because it was quite... It was pretty late when it happened. So anyway, um, I'm in the 
living room with the golden v uh, re re retrieve or whatever they call it. And, uh, Virginia. <laughs> golden Virginia. <laughs> We're at Golden, no, Golden Labrador, sorry, got me all mixed up now. So, <laughs> I, and I called it Candy, and it all worked out we were a boy anyway. So, <laughs> we we did the same with Cat, we once called it a Cat and Zoe, and it worked out it were a boy. So, anyway, um, so I'm playing with my dog, Candy, and I'd say, wait, and my mum used to have, like me now, I, I have to have my curtains open a bit. Because I, I absolutely feel locked in otherwise, totally yeah. agoraphobic if if I can't see anything outside, even if it is dark. Yeah. So um, my mum had the gap like this. So the height of me, uh, my head probably come just above the windowsill like that. And I used to say, Candy, come on, there's a pig at window. And I used to tap on the windowsill, you know, can they come on, there's a pig at window. And uh, it goes like a bounding over, big floppy legs and jump up on a windowsill and look out like that. Mm -hmm. uh, forget it, I'm going, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'd let go into my mum's in the uh, kitchen again where she sat watching washer. And I'd be like, <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Candy, there's a pig at window. You can pound it in. <laughs> Feet on window. And this went on for days until my mum used to shout at me, Paula, stop it with that dog, you know, winding dog up. So I was a bit gutted about that. But I had to shove a few more in before I stopped. So anyway, this particular night, now, I'm not sure I'm losing it a bit here because it was either quarter past six or quarter past eight. And the streets were a lot quieter then. In the 70s, you know, the, it, you know people shut the doors. They, they, they stayed in. That was it. Yeah. You know, there were little shops open. They all shut at six or five or whatever. And uh, anyway, so um, I call the dog in. She's washing again. Or doing what have you in the kitchen? Oh, Candy, there's a pig at window. Come on, no, 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 no. pounding paws on the uh, floor. Straight up to the windowsill. And it didn't have the same reaction as what it had all them other times. And uh, I thought, oh, but it's where well, normally it'd have its tail wagging and, you know, exciting. And it just stopped and it was froze. This tail didn't wag. The, 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 my entire dog just froze. And I'm looking at it like, well, you, normally you'd get down, you know, and you'd go back in the kitchen, you know, nothing. And I'd say it was like that. It, Ten seconds don't seem a long time. But when you stood on there watching it, it's like forever, you know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it started yelping. And it slowly come away, I mean, really slow, come away from the window ledge, the point where it's pushing window ledge, drops down onto its feet, backs off, not, not taking its eyes off at window, it just totally backs away. And when it gets to the middle of the room, spins round and dashes off into the kitchen. And my mum's saying, what have you done to the dog? I haven't done anything to the dog. What have you done to the dog? I'm thinking, right, what is out there? What has it seen? You know? So I gets to the window. I opens the curtain a bit more. And I could hear my mum, because he could hear clatter at top at rail. And it, I heard my mum say, stop messing about with them curtains, you know? So I, I get up to the window. And I'm looking out like that. No, I couldn't see out. So I did see kind of a shadow movement in front of window, but no that I could focus on without going like that. Yeah. So I obviously didn't wear glasses then, so I take my glasses off now a bit right up to window like that to block the light that were in the living room that we had on because it's it, not big light. We're yeah. on, so it's blocking that light. And there were no other light coming from the outside except a few you know, um, windows up and down straight. And all I could see then 
was a face looking at right back at me about the same height as me. And it had bald head, bigger than mine, the black eyes. Now, when I said there's a pig at the window, there's a pig at the window, this didn't... It, it, now I look at it, it's, it's no nose. And all I could see were two walls. Now, when you look at a pig, it's the big two walls, isn't it? Yeah. Flat. So, and it's looking right up at the way. So between us, we've got about that much. Yeah. You know, and the pane of glass in between. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know who we'll start up most, me or it. <laughs> I went, oh, right, this sort of thing. But as I'm pulling away, I could see it pulling away. But it, I had uh, the wall that we had outside the house, it's still there now, is about maybe three feet tall, stone wall. And I saw it kind of go backwards and glide backwards, but even though the leg was the legs were in the motion of movement, if it was actually moving on the floor, it wasn't. It was it it glided, but with right. the legs in motion, and it was so smooth and soft the way that it did it. And it, it was slow as well. It was pretty slow. And all of a sudden it landed, turned to face up the street, looks right at me like that, and it leant right over. But it's, it's got its head up like that, looking forward. And it, all I could see of it was then was a blue... Navy blue, I mean, I can see it's navy blue because the light from the house is outside the window now. So I can see, you know, my eyes have adjusted. It's very navy blue. It's got a round collar. It's got long sleeves. And as it starts running up, but while it's running up the street, with it bent right over, head up, looking at me like that, um, I get... I can see so far as to the gate, and when it gets past the gate, I can see that what it's wearing is like a one-piece thing, and the um, the blue tight so it finishes at just above the knee. So it's like a cyclist's like like a thing that cyclists wear. How, you know what I mean? How far up does it come? It won't eye. It I. Were, I'd say. Right, so if I, about there, about there, where that oh, is. So not you know? like, certain, like oh. I've, no, mm -hmm. okay. And I didn't see any kind of insignia on it or anything, but it, then it was too quick as it were moving anywhere. But I got a good look at the feet as well. So that stayed in my mind, the feet. And I'd have to draw that to explain how, how they actually look because my fingers can't show that kind of motion. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but it actually glided, but then it did run. It, you know, yeah. it glided up the street. It actually run then. So and you were six then? I was six, yeah. And then it were like quick shut curtains. I'm going to sit with my mum in the kitchen. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't remember. She'll have probably questioned me and said, you know, what were you messing about at in there? And, you know, a six-year-old, can you tell? Some parents might be able to talk to their mum about them sort of things. Um, my mum will not like that. You know, she was a, a very private woman and she never discussed birds and bees, never mind all else. So um, I couldn't bring myself to tell her, you know, yeah. and... So that would that would that six, yeah. Wow. So your next experience will have been when you were about twelve. Right, there's a few at twelve. Um, right, so or is it one at twelve, two at twelve, one at thirteen? I know there's one at thirteen. <laughs> um, 
Right, so me and my friend had I thought I heard somebody knocking on my door then. So this one is that, that me and my friend had, so we had this gap, sorry, let's start again. We've got this, you know, six year gap. Something might have happened if it as I don't recall it. Happen all the time though, doesn't it? Like you have people saying, Oh, I get taken every single night. Well, I mean, I think for little periods of time, maybe you're taking a lot, but then there's massive gaps in between. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've been, there, there's years, years. Yeah, yeah. my most got ten years. So but anyway, so six years gone by and um me and my friend, she was a bit older. I think she was about two and a half years older than me. And uh, she was a bit irresponsible more than what I was. So she kind of led me astray, you know. <laughs> and uh, so she says, come on, we'll, oh, we'll meet whoever down in Woods, Judy Woods, they call it. It's not the person, Judy Woods. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Judy Woods in Bradford. Yeah. She's a, um, if you look it up, people, it is a well-known spot for UFOs in the past, in the 80s, in which case, that, therefore, that is when I had my experience. Mm. So I was thinking, well, who's these people we're going to meet? You know what I mean? I had no idea. So, I, I'm, you know, I'm taking it we're meeting some some of her mates or some lads that we fancied. But, you know, I wasn't thinking like that so then, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, well, we'll go with Flo, <laughs> you know. So anyway, we set off. And uh, it is quite, when you're 12 year old, it's quite a long walk. So from here to Judy Woods at Woodside, I'd say 45 minutes to get there by foot. So if that's if you know what little ginnels to go down, you know, cut through houses and stuff. So now I'm just losing it now on timing. It's all written down in a journal upstairs. You've seen the piece of paper. But as I'm getting older, I'm losing that timing thing, you know. Yeah. It's kind of become a bit blurry. And anyway, so um, the times it didn't match up. So I think it was about quarter past six, half past six. I don't know. Anyway, when we set off. And by the time we got there, I know it was dark. And we'd got to the age now. All I remember from there is, from setting off, we're walking and talking, and then all I remember is getting the edge of um, a snicket, a ginnel, whatever you want to call it, and there's, oh, there's a big fence at each side. There's only enough room, well, there's enough room for two people at a push to walk down this little path, um, and then it narrows to one person, so other person's got to walk in front or behind you. Oh, yeah. So this fence, I've, I think I've been about, I've been pretty tall since I was about 12. I don't think I've grown much since I was 12 in height. Well, I was a bean pole at school and then I didn't get any bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I wasn't the tallest and that were it. I, I didn't seem to get any bigger. So, um, uh, the, so this this fence and it's pretty high. I'd say it's about a good six foot. And so these houses, uh, you know, like they'll have a bit of a garden then house. So you can see distance between fence and house. You can see this garden. You know, there's a garden there. And it's same um, at that side. And as you're getting kind of lower down, the houses are getting further back. So I'm assuming the gardens are either getting bigger or I don't know how it, how it works, but I'm just carrying on following this fence and then trees are starting to appear. So we're actually getting into the woods now. So, and then the kind of fence kind of, it's getting darker, a whole lot darker. So all we're kind of following is like moonlight or, you know, we didn't have mobile phones then, so it was a matter of if, if you ate your carrots, you can see. <laughs> 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 so anyway, um, somehow it was like a fumble, fumble all the way down this little, you know, snicket thing until the houses diminished and all we were left with were like trees and then the trees just suddenly stopped. Now, 
because I couldn't see <laughs> that far in front of us, um, I think she will be behind me at this moment. So when it kind of, the fence stopped it opened up, she's, I know she's come outside of me. And, oh, and, ooh, like, it's because I was carrying on walking and I kind of realised I could hear water. So I, it kind of made, oh, God, yeah, I mean, no, no puddle makes that kind of swishy, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Jump back a bit. And, uh, you know, I, I said something in the lines of, shit, there's water there, you know. <laughs> so anyway, we kind of stood there on edge and, uh, you know, a, a bit of a conversation. Well, shall we go back now? And, uh, no saying, well, what we're here for anyway. I had no idea what, you know what I mean? By then it had gone because I was too focused on trying to fumble my way down this snicket. So next minute, I sees. 20 foot, not, it's not even 20 foot, I'd say it was 10 foot in front of me. Yeah, it's about 10 foot in front of me. All of a sudden, it was like something had lit the, the water up 10 foot in front of me in a circular. But it wasn't penetrating under the water. Mm. You know what, it, I mean, it, it, in a mucky um, lake or reservoir or whatever it is, um, it isn't mucky it, it, enough so it's, you know, it's not murky or out like that. You should have been able to see with this light, but it didn't, it didn't penetrate the water at all. So then it was like, oh, um, there was kind of a, how can I put it? You know, when you get the, even on reservoirs, you, you get the waves. It still yeah, affects. Yeah. It was that, but it was like going away. So they were coming this way, but in in this circle bit, it it was kind of bubbly a bit, and the waves were going outwards. It's so it like somebody pushing something down and causing okay little waves. I'm not talking, you know, tsunamis. You know what I mean? But it, it, I could see what it were doing, and these little tiny bubbles within, and it were like <laughs> how can I say it? Do you think there was some sort of like downward pressure, some sort of force that was causing the, the movement in the water? I've no idea. I've, I've um, no idea. But when I'm looking at these like tiny little bubbles appearing, I'm like, I think it's fish that cause them little bubbles to come up now and again, is it? I don't know. Okay. Little tiny bubbles. And they were like, I could see a sparkly sort of sheen to it within this circle on water and then there's I'm like kind of well, where's that from it took me a few seconds to think where's this light coming from and I kind of looked up and I've never ever seen anything like it in my life it is this thing now I think you once said it the way that I could only describe it is like a boomerang with another leg on it <laughs> you know so it's yeah as rounded and then it goes like that it's um and it's um so it's not a triangle but if you squash the sides in so it's got it's got three yeah yes yeah. it's a bit and like a propeller is it sorry what like a bit like a propeller but there's three yeah so, yeah, mm. yeah. So I can't, I can't describe things as good as you for some reason. So I'm seeing this, and it's, and it's upright. It's not like it's flat. It's straight upright, 20 feet that way, 20 feet that way. The beam of light, I can't even say which part of that craft it's coming from, but it's like that, and it's, there's not a mountain. You know, it's not, not a massive beam. It, it's just maybe about that big, the beam. Yeah. Anyway, well, you're looking that big. <laughs> anyway, um, so this thing, as a, as I described it the other day in one of the, uh, one of the videos I did about the triangle when I with that cave with a black circle in the centre, and it had I went straight away. That's. What I noticed then was this deep, dense 
dark black circle in the center and on each of these things it were going round really 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 slow clockwise really slow really slow one had green light one had red light one had blue light absolutely no noise whatsoever N no noise at all i could actually hear my breathing and no noise of the water lapping, as I'd heard it when I first got there. And I remember, I looked, uh, there were no light shining on us as such, but I could yeah. see. When I looked at my friend, it, everything just slowed right down. I was acting normal, and then I went, you know, I don't know how long I was stood there. And I looked at my friend, it was like as if I'd gone, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I looked at her and she had this blue light. I, I was like bathed in a, a blue light. But I could see it also on me. But when I kind of looked at the object, you couldn't see this blue light, only on the... It only lit what it touched, what it landed on. Yeah. I don't... Because... The, well, the, what the you're describing, it sounds exactly like what you know in Wales. Yeah. Was, there were, and obviously, in my experience, well, uh, it was our group experience. Daniel was stood on a wall next to me. We were looking up at this light, which was just white, but everything that the light shone on was blue. So even though yeah. the light was white, yeah. when it, yeah. anything, it was blue. So. You know, yeah, that struck me that oh, well, I'm doing it because it, were, it had a red light, a green light, and a blue light. But these lights weren't even bright, they were so dull, they were lovely. Don't get me wrong, they were like <sighs> colors that you wouldn't expect, you know, like they want a bright green or they want a piercing blue, or they were more of a pastel -y kind of, you know. Anyway, um, and so they weren't bright enough to kind of go on to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah, when I looked at her in that uh, slow <laughs> thing, she was lit up. I was lit up. Obviously, I couldn't see it if it were on my face. But when I looked straight forward, it's not there. And then all of a sudden, I went <laughs> in slow motion, and I don't know how I did it, F this run and it was like we turned really slow and as I'm moving it's like I'm getting lower and lower and lower down in as if I'm running myself in at ground or right. running in like sand boom I'm gone out black everything's black next minute I'm at the bottom of my straight it's like as if oh I've landed and I don't remember. Oh, in between that, my friend's not with me. I have no idea. I didn't even think, where's my friend gone? So I could hear all this carrying on on the street. And so, because I'm just around the corner. So I could hear kids shouting and, you know, and I'm thinking, what are they all doing? I'm, I thought somebody were having a party. So... I, I starts walking up straight and I could hear and uh, all adults were out on the doorstep and people going, oh, oh. and I heard a few people saying, well, nobody's seen her. Last time she went out with the, I won't give names away, but last time she went out with the weather, you know what I mean? And nobody's seen her. And then this kid who were on this, I think it were BMX at the time because I always wanted one. This kid who were on the, uh, this BMX thing, I said, she's here, Paula's here, Paula's here, she's home. So, you know, kids are hanging around me, where have you been, where have you been? I was thinking, because it was such a short, I, I was totally confused walking up that street because I've got kids saying, where have you been? Adults saying, your mum's been looking for you. I'm like, what? <laughs> what the hell's going on? Right? But, me setting off at quarter past half past six or whatever time it was, it were only 
tea time ish. For me going there three quarters of an hour and me landing back where I was, me thinking that probably it was that bar in that in between bit, I don't remember time. Yeah. It should have been no later than eight o'clock, quarter past eight. Yeah. So I'm walking up the street. I've got kids surrounding me. Oh, you should have told your mum where you were going. Nah, nah, nah. And I'm like, I, I was that baffled. I couldn't even answer. As I'm walking up the street, I look to me. Oh, I'm getting towards my grandma's. This is the house that I'm in now. It's my grandma's. So as I'm getting closer to the house, I see this local policeman stood at the door. So I'm walking up and out, and uh, my sister would ask, she says, she's going to fucking kill you now. <laughs> like uh, uh, <laughs> I, I do wrong. You know what I mean? So as I'm walking in the house, my nan pushed me back out again. A policeman went, I don't think so, and grabbed me by the arm. Where have you been? And I thought, I can't tell my nan that, that I've been at the woods. Because I would get that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So she in the park. So I said, well, uh, my friends, n- well, well, we rung your friend. She would out with you, blah, blah, blah. Where have you been? I'm thinking, shit, 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 where have I been? Where have I been? I don't know. I just come out with it. I don't know. I'd rather say I don't know than say that I were in woods because I would be in the shit. You know what I mean? So anyway, <laughs> eventually I just burst out crying because I was frustrated. The policeman then said, do you realise what time it is? Do you know what time it is? And I looked at him and I'm like, no. Me still thinking it's quarter past eight. Are they having a laugh? You know what I mean? And I'm like, no, like this. And he says, it's five to midnight. I'm like, what? It's five to midnight. Where have you been? I went, I don't know, through tears and everything. Eventually, my nan let me through the door. I run straight upstairs to my bed because there's no way I'm getting a, a bollocking, you know what I mean, for going up <laughs> one. And I'm like, where, where did Pauline go? But then I'd forgotten about it then. I'd forgotten. So I get up the next morning. And I'm thinking, oh, no, my nan's going to kill me. My nan's going to question me, where have you been, you know? Been lo- nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. And then it like, I didn't see my friend for ages, and I don't know why. I really mm. do not know why I did not see my friend for ages. It might have been weeks, it might have been months, it, but she didn't even cross my mind. They were not there. They were like, uh, oh, I, I read Pauline, whatever, see what's happened to her or, you know what I mean? Nothing, nothing at all that crossed my mind. And it were only like, it could have been like years later that I've, you know, a months later. I know it were a long time that had gone by and I eventually got in contact with, I shouldn't have lived down road and I said remember that time that we gone to Judy Woods blah 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 but it's like she was at home at quarter past nine yet yeah, I got here at five to twelve what where what how when you know how does that work yeah. out yeah moment in time where she can't remember either but she were at home she were home a lot earlier than me so where would where would I where'd I gone so that went into that one it were like oh we're all forgotten about nobody mentioned it again end of so you know how can you say you know I I were really expecting my grandma in the morning I were dreading coming downstairs I thought, I am going to get the biggest bollocking of my life for going to them woods or question, 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 where did you go, where did you go, where did you go, why are you late? Nothing. Mm. Absolutely. Not even off my mum, not even off my sister. That's mad, and you had about three, so you had three, four hours missing time. 
Mm. Yeah, still can't think to this day what happened. I was just there running up this snicket, felt like I was kind of running in at ground really slow. Black out, next minute I'm at the bottom of my street walking up. <coughs> yeah. Not good. No. We had a weird one with time, didn't we? Yeah. We were actually talking about what would be your next experience when it happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we <We're... laughs> I'll never forget this. It was the most bizarre thing ever. So I come to pick you up. I live in Liverpool. You live in Bradford. It's over an hour in between. Yeah. We got to the end of your street. And I said, I'll just text Dave and let him know that we're on our way. So I said, setting off. See you soon. Blah. So we get to Junction 12. We have to come off Junction 12. And then you go, right. And then you get onto the M62 towards Liverpool. We have to go through Chain Bar, which is the most nightmarish disaster of a road system um, just outside Bradford. And uh, <laughs> I go, all right, then. I've dropped me back here. <laughs> so, so we're on our way to my house and uh, we're chatting away about everything. And I was like, oh, shit, we've gone the wrong way. So we had to look back round, all the way up, all the way back down. And we have roundabouts in in, in this country. Uh, so you have to go, find one, loop round, come back, loop round, get back onto the right road, did it again. Mm. So we were talking. And uh, on the third time, <laughs> third time, Everything just went weird like that, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Just, we, we went silent, which we never normally were. We totally silent. At the same um, time, we, it like, we did summer and summer changed. We were it, at the right side of Manchester. I was yeah, like, we did. how have we got here? And but it was all because you don't drive, so and you didn't know the road very well. You no. knew the exact second I knew something wasn't yeah. right. We both yeah. shut up and I was like, yeah. so we had to get back onto that M62 to get onto Junction 12, yeah. get onto the M62 to Liverpool. So bear in mind, we've done this three times now, messed up three times, but we were quiet all the way back. On that last stretch, we were like, just atmosphere. <laughs> it was just weird. And then when we did speak, it was the odd word. Yeah. That was uh, yeah. No. It was it was no it was so weird until yeah. we got the house and it changed back again. Yeah. You know so it was like, almost like it was a relief that had gone on. Yeah. But you didn't know the road, so how you knew that something wasn't right but at the very same second. So yeah. we got to my house and Dave said, You were quick and we were like hey, we should have been late. Messed up. Like, looking at each other like, what's he on about? <laughs> the other side of Manchester somehow. Had to get back onto the M62 three times. Should have taken two hours. So yeah. I went to my phone to tell him that more time had passed than he'd realised. And the yeah. text message that I sent was one hour. There is no way. Unless I drive at 300 miles an hour, which I would if I could, um, but there was no way that yeah. we messed up three times. Uh, I messed up three times. Got from Bradford to Liverpool in one hour. Like how? How, does, how, how is, is that so possible? It's not. It's not. <laughs> yeah. No, so that. that was impossible. That we actually gained time. So yeah. that was bizarre. Can't explain that. Can't explain yeah. that at all. <laughs> So do you want me to talk about when I was 13 then, my next, is it 12, 13, my next one after that? Or? What you were talking about, is this the one with the back? Yeah. Yeah, right. So it was, you were talking, you were just saying, so I went round to pull it out on my back and boom, that's when the atmosphere changed in the, in the car. So yeah. Was, Story now that you're about to tell. Not story. Uh, this, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Anyway, so um, we're at 12, 13. Like I said, me, as I'm getting older, me, I'm losing it now. But <clears throat> it's like time's irrelevant now, so I don't care anymore. But anyway, I'd say, let me say I'm 13. Uh, back into 12. So anyway, I'd gone to bed and uh, still were living with my grandma. And um, I've had a lot of weird experiences before that. You know, like, it, it ain't just got from talking to a bird to see my first UFO to Candy and the Pig and there's, like, little bits in between, you know, like, it happened in bedrooms. So it's like, it, I've been in under the duvet because I, I used to sleep because I was that scared of I don't know what. But I was that scared I'd sleep until I couldn't breathe. And then, you know what I mean? Get me head out at Dover. Yeah. There so many times where it felt like, and we didn't even have cats at that moment, where it felt like somebody had got their hands and were going like that on bed, on the bottom of my bed. And then I'd gone, right, one, two, three, four, five. Not there. And as soon as I've gone like that, that stopped. And I've been wide awake. <laughs> and, been, and, and it's yeah. stuff like, so, you know, these these are little bits in between. Anyway, so I get back to age 12, 13, one. So um, I've gone to bed as the usual. And, and this is, this is a, between 12 and 14 was a very heightened moment. Now, I think that's because um, hormonal and, pubescent and you know what I mean yeah so, um, gone to bed gone to sleep next minute I remember s- s- being on a like a metal a stainless steel like a bench but it was more like a table but a bench <laughs> it mm. wasn't it was wider than a bench yeah. Not as big as a table. So, you know, and you could have fit three people my size on it. But it, whether or not you could, it was supposed to be there for other people at back of me, I don't know. But anyway, so it's a metal a metal thing. I, I, I can't even tell you whether it had legs or it floated or it come out of a wall. I, I don't know. I can't, I, I can't even think of that. Because I'm actually sat on there, so I can't see out anywhere. So every bit of room is light. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's suffused in me. It's not bright. It's pretty dull, actually, um, this light that's on me. And I've got... So I'm sat with my arms in front of me, but my head's like... And all I can do is move my eyes. Anyway, um, but beyond this light... It's very dark. I know I'm in a room, but I can't see where the room finishes because it, the further back it gets, the blacker it gets. Right. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I'm just sat there, and all of a sudden, what feels like a tube, I can, I can feel it now as I'm thinking about it, Right at the bottom of my spine, you know where your coccyx is. All oh, right, yeah. I, and I felt some cold being pushed in through my skin, not to the point where I'm in agony. It did hurt a little bit, not much. I can't say, you know, I was in agony, I was screaming and all that, but it hurt enough to me to notice it. Yeah. That it would come up right down there, and I could feel it, and I could feel it going through and in. And I'm like, oh, what, is what is it? I just found, and, and then I kind of felt this stickiness going down, you know, down, it's going to be rude, down crack of your ass. <laughs> it's like a sticky, cold, cold, yeah. but then it would be warm. And I think, what's that but my head down there? I just found the strength to get my arms 
and put them. It took me ages to get pick me arms up to put Move them over. around the back. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's took me ages to pick me arms up off my legs. Yeah. To put them back of me, and um, I felt like hands, but bony. Bony things, you know what I mean? And it was cold, cold. But I remember my grandma's hands always feeling cold and bony. Right. Right? And and she did, she, I don't know why, because she was a big lady, my grandma, but she always had, like, thin, bony hands. And because they were bony, her knuckles looked big. And so <laughs> the feel of them reminded me of my, gran, my grandma's hands. So I put, and I went like this, and I could feel them. I got hold of my hands, gently brought them back, put them on me. They carried on with what they were doing. I could feel them pissing about the bottom of my back and this damp, wet, clammy, sticky, warm, weird stuff moving. And... um so I put them down, I'm like, that still. So I thought, oh, I want to know what it is. So again, ages to get round to my back. And again, they got one of them got that hand. It went like that. I don't know if it was the same thing. They got that hand and put it on top of my other hand like that. And then they had their hand hovering over the top. It didn't touch me. But the force of even though their hand, it, I could see it now, clear as day, it's old, it's wrinkly, it's bony, it's got long fingers. I can't say how many fingers it's got. Mm. It's the brownie tinge, not the tan, but the brownie tinge. And I could see them, and I would, it, it were like ones that I saw outside there were drawn and the fingernails, you know, the ones that I saw down in the garden. And they yeah. same because I'm directly right out looking at them. And no matter how much I tried to move, I could not lift my hands away from my legs. Whoever it was then were carrying on, messing about down my back. But these fingernails, and I've seen them there, and they always look right clean cut, like you just had them trimmed all off and filed. Yeah. And I'll never forget the look of them. And... Um, so these bony fit. Anyway, I just remember then struggling, struggling, struggling to get my hands free and it, it just wasn't happening. At this point then, I'm seeing out of my peripheral view, I'm like that, something stood there. But now my eyes aren't working enough to be able to go like that, you know, turn my eyes. So... And then I'm feeling myself going deeper and deeper into darkness. And I'm gone. Next morning, I wake up and I get out of bed. I say, I'd either gone up window doing summer because me and my grandma shared a bedroom. So I had a single bed at this side. My grandma had that. She says, Paula, you better get to the bathroom. I went, why? So she says, I think, you know, you, you're having a women's problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, no, because you know when you know. and You, you, you know. mean there was blood on your night, eh? Yeah, there were blood yeah. all over the back. So with me lying down, that thing there, it, it, if, so it looks like I bled through it. So she says, you better go get changed, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking of ghosts at all. I'm like, yeah, I ain't gone. No, what's happened to me? I'm not, I'm not come on my period. And uh, I'm a bit confused myself at this point, you know. So we had one of them, do you remember them plastic cupboards that, uh, that were like you put your toothbrush in and they had yeah. a bit of a mirror on front, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. uh, uh, they were plastic, they were horrible. And uh, I think I was like a bluey colour. And it was pretty low down because my grandma was small anyway, so she'd had it put down a bit. So I lifted my nightdress up and I went like that. 
and there's blood all the way where that little thing was. Um, there's a like a little tiny scab over it, and three scratches. It looked like fingernails. I never grew my. I bit my nails until I was in my late thirties. Until it got they got septic because I bit them that much. So they want my fingernails um, from the top of my spine right down to the bottom in the middle three yeah. fingernail scratch marks and I'm like but I remember what happened I remember that what had happened in night to me but I couldn't mm. tell I no I hadn't come on my period I couldn't tell her that because she'd say well what, where's blood from then so that's another thing I had to keep her you know quiet yeah. about yeah, you know, so I wish I could now. I wish I could go back to me now and say, right, this happened, that happened. Over. And she won't be surprised at all because looking back now, she was one of them, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? She, you know, so I don't mean one of them greats. I mean, one of us. So. say that she'd seen something over the factory, me, the street? Me, yeah, so I don't know whether this were before or after, I'd gone to bed one particular, night, one particular night, I'm either 12, 13, maybe 14, and same again. And I'd gone in uh, such a deep sleep so quick. And I, all I remember is there's the factory, the one that set on fire not so long ago. I videoed it. <coughs> yeah. And I were... The chimney that goes it's with that. Yeah. So this is like a sort of um, industrial Victorian um, big factory, a big chimney, just for people who are watching, kind of a typical uh, Bradford. Um, it was a biggest city, <laughs> biggest city in the world at one point. And it was yeah. uh, like all industry and workhouses and grimness but anyway <laughs> that is what's at the bottom of the street big chimney and the victorian factory so in in this dream um i'm stood on on the roof of this factory in my night dress that i've got on in bed <laughs> and i'm in stood in front of a big if I go like that with my arms, it, it's that big. You know what? As, as wide as I can put my arms, a circular. I think it were a orangey yellow light. It were orangey yellow, but it wasn't bright. Like I said, it was it were that the colours that I could see from kind of that bit and that bit um, was like a pastel. So they're not bright. And um, so it's not blinded, but I'm, I have to look straight at it. It's inches from me, and I have to look straight at this big light. Yeah. The peripheral view, I could see a man coming home from a pub, swaying about, walking on bottom, going home. But I'm still looking for So I'm kind of more concentrating now on what's going on there in my peripheral and I could see my nan at her door calling the cat. You know, so she's going, yeah. Is that she's that? but she couldn't go. She couldn't make that noise. How she called the cat was. <laughs> so I remember that clear as there that, and I go there in it, and I'm thinking to myself, I wish my nan could call that cat properly. But she's calling the cat. The cat, I could see it trailing across the road. My nan stood at the door and she looks down where I am over the factory. So I'm looking at her at my peripheral. She's just seen what she's seen and looks up over the mill. Comes straight in. Shut the door, I'm assuming. So I'm just stood there in front of this thing. It then it just it's gone. I don't remember out in between that. I wakes up in the morning, boom, I'm like that. 
And my, my nan were already downstairs. She was making a cup of tea or whatever. So I come running down the steps and I remember it was like the blood draining from me. And my nan said, you look like you've seen a ghost. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I went, no, no, I just don't feel a bit well. I think this is when I was starting to realise that this was not normal, what I was going through. So it was like, oh, you know, that rush of, you know. So, um, and I was sat there on the sofa and I remember my nan had a teapot on the table and, and she said, oh, she said, oh, you look a bit pale and are you all right? I'm like, yeah. So she said, you'll never guess what I saw last night. I went, what did you see? What did you see like this? Because I knew what she was going to say. She said, I saw a flying saucer. I, I saw a flying saucer. You like this? I'll, you know what I mean? And she's going on. About, I went, Nan, Nan, forget that bit. Where did you see it? Over the mill, at the bottom of the street. And it was all different colours. She said it was so beautiful. It was the most beautiful thing she'd ever seen. Orange light, blue light, pink light, gold light, silver light, whatever light, different hues of, but not bright, bright. They were, like I said, like pastely again. And, you know, I can't remember whether she said it was spinning, but while I'm stood in front of that light, I don't recall, otherwise it would have been moving round, wouldn't it? But mm. it, when I was stood there, so I didn't get to the point. I don't remember or what, whether she said it were going round or anything, but she said it were absolutely beautiful. And that's how she described beautiful. And it didn't dawn on me a certain way. Now, why did you come in house? Why, you know? Yeah, yeah. I didn't stay out looking at it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so while I'm on that roof with this UFO, she's at the door watching that while I'm upstairs asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I still never, ever got round to telling her about it. <laughs> oh. You know, something um, has been going on in my brain since the Judy Woods thing. Yeah. Boomerang type. It was like a boomerang mm. with three arms. Right. Any uh, we, we call them discs we say the discs but mm. you said that was rotating now if you imagine that we started rotating really quickly it, it was like a disc oh my god I've just yeah yeah so if it was up in the air and flat fidget spinners it's like you, you look at a fidget spin it's the same sort of oh thing. yeah 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 so you turn that really fast it's just one big yeah, little yeah. circle. Oh, yeah. Oh. So we don't know what shape they are, really, do we? When we see them all, you know, we say it's a disc. Might not be. Not all of them. Some of them will be. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, but this is what was this? Nineteen eighty-two. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-two. Twelve. I had mostly paranormal stuff. It wasn't until 1992 that I saw an alien. And it was like midweek, midday, you know. Um, I had a baby, my son Louis. He was about, well, he had that little baby grow on that. I'll <laughs> um, so I think he was about five months old. He was born in October, so it might have been about, Maybe about this time of year, actually. Um, and I woke up because I heard, I was having an afternoon nap and I would always have him on my chest. He would lie on his stomach on my chest. And that's how I would go to sleep. If he had a nap, I'd have a nap. <laughs> um, yeah, and some, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I heard somebody say, Sasha, wake up now. Just like that. So I opened my eyes and right in front of me, and I'm laying on my side, is this little blue goblin? With yeah. Really massive black eyes. Yeah. This sort of line of a mouth. It was just all wrinkles. Everything about it was kind of like these wobbly wrinkles. And it had a chest a little bit like a gorilla, you know, that kind of coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. 
I get what you mean. Uh, had a brown hooded cape thing on it. And I can't even describe how blue. I've never seen that kind of blue anywhere. It's really, really deep, but really, really bright. And it was just wrinkly. And the mouth was just this slash. Um, I understand a bit because I've seen that in the tanned ones. Yeah, well, I shot this to the bottom of the bed. And I had also Louis. And I just scrabbled to the bottom of the bed and stood at the bottom of the bed. And it, and there was nothing there. So I was like, wow. And that's how I'm shouting for Tim, thinking he must have come home and, he, and he's woken me up from a crazy dream saying, Sasha, wake up. And there was nobody there. No one in the flat at all. So I'm stood there like, this is bizarre. This something, you know, like it felt really, really weird. So... I just thought it was a dream, you know, kind of relegated to a dream until about 2006 when um, Steve Johnson and friends, Alan Rawson and Steve Johnson, we were on UFO Data Forum, um, mm. by Russ Callahan and uh, Mike Buckley after Graham Birdsell died. Uh, they set up UFO Data Magazine, which I ended up writing for them. But anyway, they would, uh, we were all talking on the forum and Steve Johnson said that he'd had a dream about one of these little blue things riding his tricycle and he didn't think he was going to get it back. He was bothered about getting it back. Um, So they said, you need to watch communion, which is when they watch communion. And so when that little thing popped out from behind the vase with the flowers, oh my God, just knew it wasn't a dream then. Now, now I get accused of uh, stealing Whitley Strieber's account. Well, I was going to get... <laughs> Which is nothing like Whitley Strieber's account. I woke up, saw it for, like, two seconds. One, two, and I was, boom, at the bottom of the bed. Yeah. You know I mean? so. Why, you know, when people... Why do they do that? You know, you. why would you want... Nobody wants to be in this fucking club for the start. No, they all do. They all uh, say, oh, it happened to me. Oh, I would handle it better. I would have talked to them. That's it. Those are, it doesn't happen to might want to be in it. But once you're in it, trust me, it's not that cool. Want to be us. Right. And have a joke about it. But, you know, it's not something I want to be in. Mm. Um, but then, like I've always said to you, um, after the time when they the, haven't, being or you know I miss them really bad but when they're here I'm like <laughs> yeah. uh, no I don't miss them <laughs> I'm I shaking I can feel myself starting to go you know you get that tense and you get uh, like uh, yeah, yeah. you know because it just you just don't know what it is and you don't know what you're dealing with and yeah but you know, now we Done because they haven't visited for quite a while. Oh, wherever they've come from. Um, I'm not, I'm not bothered whether they do come or not now anymore. It's like, I think I'll see them on my deathbed. I'll know what it is then, you know. And, and be, be, between now and then, I'm not really bothered whether I see them again or not. I miss them, but I don't. Mm. But not as bad as I used to. So, oh, not after when we met in 2012. My God, that was the hardest time in my life. That was even harder than what was going on in Wales. Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to talk about half of what was going on, but it was just really fortuitous that you turned up on my doorstep, and uh, because. I don't had anything to do with the greys up until that point. It was just after when I met you, is just before that is when I saw the triangle at Kev's. And I think that's the one that topped it off after seeing all, you know, what, what I'd gone through, because it's all in between as well, which we'll have to discuss on another on yeah. another recording. But um, there's all that in between bit, but it, it was the, the triangle... Oh, no, because then I've got baby rabbits, aliens and baby rabbits, and then the three orbs on at the school. But there's that as well. So all that kind of coming 
a wave and it will like, I, I don't know where to go, I don't know where to turn. And then that's when I got put on to you. So all that had happened just before I met you. Yeah. You know. Wild time, 2012. Because <laughs> yeah. I took fo- those photos of those uh, craft, whatever they were, those objects in 2012, in July. In fact, we, didn't we meet in July? Yeah. I think so, it was June. July, June. I'd uh, had my hair cut. You wanted, you were uh, going to have to get really uh, nice. I'm going to get it back uh, like that. <laughs> sick of my hair. <laughs> Yeah, I cut it a bob, and I didn't have any money. If I'd have had money, I'd have been to the hairdressers. <laughs> you would have turned up. I would have had the exact same hair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love your hair. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> it would not like it is now, it? It a real, a real, like, big urge to go get my hair cut, because I, I loved having it in a bob. I think you should now, anyway. I think you should have it go short. Yeah. I think- Hairy, hairy creature. Um, yeah, well, I think we'll call it a day for now for this for this mm. session. We'll yeah, so much more to say. Oh my god, so many things. So much. It's going to take a few episodes. <laughs> All of the episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just want to tell our stories, really, don't we? And you know. The UFO community is amazing, but it's also seriously shit yeah. and repetitive and yeah. stuck in the past. And there's so much going on. And I've hardly ever talked about hardly any of my stuff. No, and... well, in, in the next episode, I'm <laughs> about your stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've got so much of mine to do, but I'm also, you know, I want to talk about yours as well. You know, they ain't just going to be about me. I don't want it to be just me about me. It's me and you, Sasha, because we've gone through a lot together That's anyway. Together, okay. Yeah. I think so, we deserve both talk, you know. Do you know what? People want to hear this stuff. And, you know, I don't I, I don't blame people for not believing it. Right? I can get me a job. Right? Yeah, I don't care really, it's but... Awful. It's out there. But at the same time, you went through hell. You were in hell. I've been through hell, lived in hell. You know, there's people out there who are in hell and our words are for those people. Now, everyone else can listen, anyone else can believe or not believe, support us or not support us, whatever, you know, totally get it. At the end of the day, now it's a game changer because we can all communicate. When we find each other and we talk, we discover things. There's stuff that technologies and all kinds of things that we've figured out just by me talking to you, talking to another woman, just talking to two women, yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff. So, yeah, I think uh, what we'll do is um, get all messages now, uh, bring this to a close now, and uh, we will do some more recording again very soon. But this is part one of whatever it is we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, oh, we haven't been too waffly. I don't think yeah. we have. We did all right for our, for our yeah. first. Let's uh, go for it. <laughs> we'll probably do it again, maybe Friday night. Uh, no, maybe Saturday night if you want. Yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, we'll do that. Because, like, I, I might, I'm self-isolating, so I need something to fill my time, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of people self isolating. Maybe we can be a little bit entertaining for them. <laughs> so, okay, guys, we shall call it a day now. Right, and, folks. Okay. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>